scripture, the temple of God resides in you, not outside of you, not in the trees and in the breeze. Now it's just found in the house of man. How do knowledge get there? Do another man. How do that man get there? Do another man. And how do he get it? Do another man. How did the first man get it? I, have, I don't have that knowledge to say that. Well, I got knowledge to say it. Uh, well, okay, right. where did you get that knowledge? And that you don't have knowledge okay. to say it. Listen. When did you get that Listen. knowledge from? And that you don't have knowledge to say it? If you don't have it, I'm going to teach you today. And I'm going to give you some knowledge. A few moments later. Can a spook or spirit take me nowhere? Matter of fact, you may have made a statement about your God. Uh, if, if anybody uh, quote me if I'm wrong about it, calling himself a lie, you would beat them up? Well, here's a quarter. Tell your God to pick that up. It was at this moment that he knew. He up. Now watch my God. My, Lord. my point to show you, there is nothing over me but me. There is no God over me. It is. Matter of fact, I beat your spirit God Listen, up before I got here. The Bible it. says the fool that said in his heart, there is, there no, is God. no God. No God. I got a fool here. I got, I got a fool here. Now I'm gonna I can pick you up. I can pick that brother up. I can't. was 35 but 12 months ago I was 34 okay what was you when you was 34 well 12 months I was 34 of age now what was you the following year I was 33 what was you when you was one years of age well I was 12 months what was you when you was one month I was 32 days old what was you when you was one day old? I was 24 hours old. What was you when you was in the womb of your mother? How, how far back are you going, brother? Oh, we're going all the way back. <laughs> we're going all the way back because there is, take, take when it comes, I'm going to take you home because there is, there is no, there's no ending to it. To what? We are here. There's no ending even to our birth. You cannot find the birth record of the black man. This is scientifically the truth. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. You, let me finish my All point, right, brother Pastor Go Gino. Go ahead, sir. You cannot find the beginning of our birth. All right. Right? All right. But you can find the beginning of other people race. You say, well, there are, we are one race of people. Well, we as black, we don't consider ourselves as race because we consider ourselves as the original. Everything that came after us be begins to be what? A race. But eternal actually begins in us, the black man. Mm -hmm. You can take it or you can leave it alone. All now, right. that is everlasting. What is everlasting? Black man? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. The black man is everlasting? Everlasting connected with the creator. All right. Let's break it down. Break it down. Amen. Because he don't understand. <laughs> break it down. Sounds good, but he don't understand. Amen. When you say everlasting, that title is not given to no one but Allah God. That's right. That's right. Man never bears the title everlasting. Did Prophet Muhammad give man the title everlasting? No, Allah, he's everlasting. No, you said man is everlasting. I said the black man. All right, black he man. Ever, he, I. he is everlasting connected with the creator. Does the Quran teach that? Does the Quran, no, the messenger teach that. Does his, found, does his message supposed to come from the Quran? The Quran teaches us that believe in Allah and his messenger. But if you're going to believe in Allah, and if that messenger is the messenger of Allah, will he not bring you the message according to the Quran? Yes. Did that message come from the Quran? Did that message? Uh, no. No, sir. You're right. It didn't. No. But my point, but my point is this. We, let's say this. Listen to this. Say on. Say on. Say on, take your the time. Quran, the Holy Quran, right, teaches us again that Allah, He is the messenger. And the messenger 
Wherever the messenger says, we believe. All right. Then. Even though it's not in the Quran, but we believe. Now, Jesus walked the planet Earth, did he or did he not? Yes. And there was things that he done and did. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He did things. Right? But in the hadith, the Muslims believe certain things that what Prophet Muhammad did and what he did not, what he said, what he, what he did, what he said. But yet you will find things in the hadith that is not in the Quran. Does the hadith contradict the Quran? Does the hadith? No, sir. The hadith is supposed to be inspired by the same spirit that inspired Prophet Muhammad? Excuse me? The hadith. Does that supposed to be inspired by the same spirit that inspired Prophet Muhammad to write the Quran? Prophet Muhammad did not write the Quran. Well, excuse me if I said it wrong. Is the same spirit that sponsored the hadith sponsors the Quran? Well, Authorize it. Well, there, there are many Muslim scholars who made the, uh, as far as making the, the hadith, studying the history of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So putting, putting together the hadith, but my point is, does the uh, writings contradict the Quran? Oh, no, sir. But, no, right. sir. But do some hadith may not be good, because there are some scholars that give another interpretation does not actually correspond with the Quran. That's my point. Right. Right. Now that's my point. Right. And now that's you, my point too. Now you're coming around the mountain. Right. I want to get up there too. <laughs> now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm sorry. The Messenger of Allah to the Nation of Islam. I want to read something in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The reason why we put emphasis on let us believe what is written. written. Listen at the scriptures. Romans chapter 15 and at verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Whatsoever things were written aforetime. Were written. Were written. For our learning. For our learning. That we through patience. That we through patience. Not getting a hurry, but be patient. And comfort. And comfort or consolation. Of the scriptures. Of the scriptures. Might have hope. So if. I'm required to have hope, hope in the messenger of Allah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. then he must bring me the scriptures for my learning. That's right. And his teaching must be in compliance with the scripture of Muhammad. Amen. That teaching that God created himself from darkness for oh, the darkness. triple darkness or quadruple darkness. And the black man being oh. everlasting, the black man being eternal, the black man being always was. If the black man always was, he is himself almighty Allah. That's right. And I dare the black man in this building <laughs> or in this pulpit, mm -hmm. tell me you are Allah. If a black man Amen. in here is God, I'm going to beat God today. That's right. That's right. It's going to be little God. Amen. God is, God is almighty. Yes. We are weak. That's right. We have problems in the flesh. That's right. Man fornicate. God don't fornicate. Amen. Man lie. God don't lie. Amen. Man die. God don't die. That's right. That's right. That's true. Cool. Pastor, Pastor Gino. Yes, sir. All praise be to Allah. When you say that I, I'm not saying that I'm Allah. I'm not Allah. When you say you're everlasting, the black man is saying he's everlasting. Let me, let me say this, uh, Pastor Gino. Yes, you come to help him also, brother? Hey, he's come. What is your name, brother? Brother Amin Khalid. Brother Amin Khalid. Assalamu alaikum. You want go ahead, brother. Then yeah, you because, can help. Let, me, let me make this point. Yeah. We are not, I'm not saying that I am Allah, no. But I am saying that I am a part of God creation, that I'm connected with Him. That I can agree with. But how can you make that statement then put the word everlasting? 
because there's no birth record and you cannot find the birth record of the black man. Even though there is no birth record, can we not deny the black man was created? Yes. So if he was created, that means he wasn't always here. And if he wasn't always here, he got a father. Right. And if he got a father, God is his father, God is his originator, so he came into being, so the title everlasting cannot be attached to man. Let me, let me say this, that, that I am not God, the Allah, but yes. then I am connected with him. I agree with that. And that your Bible teaches the same thing. I am in full agreement with that. And that there's going to come a time that there would be, there would not be fornication. There yes. would not be adultery. Yes. It's going to come a time that man is going to uphold the Lord of God. I agree. There's going to come a time that there will be no evil. Yes. There's going to be a time that there will be no wrongdoing. Talk to me. And yet it will be the man that will uphold the Lord. Yes. So even though man does fornication. Yeah. Even though man does, ain't woman too, ain't leaving out either. Do. <laughs> Uh, adultery, yeah. but yet it's going to come a time of the new world order that there will not be evil, wickedness, badness, wrongdoing, because it is man with the help of God will uphold the Lord. Listen, and I brother, with that. I'm in full agreement with that. Yeah. You I believe want, that? Either. You want to turn the microphone yeah. over to All right, brother. Thank you, uh, brothers and sisters. All right. Right. Yes, yes. Introduce the brother. Let me. Put this on the brother here. I want to thank Brother Najee. Yes, sir. I want my brothers to be comfy and put this in your inside. Right, so enlightenment. Uh, right now, I would like to bring up uh, I mean Halif. And I just want to say in closing, I want to thank uh, Minister Gino for allowing me to speak. That's right. And I just want to say one thing. Um, one day when the time comes, I'd like to talk about God's coming. <laughs> We could talk about God, or that first God, how he was created all day. But when the time comes, I like to talk about his coming. Not Jesus, but God coming first. And with that, I'd like to say thank you and bring up, I mean, yeah. Uh, yes, Brother Small. Go ahead, you can say something before. Right. Yes, we, I would also like to say in closing again, we knew that this was going to be a very, very difficult subject to touch on. We knew it, brother, from the door. So we didn't come like, you know, like we really had it. We just wanted to show you. That's right. That we stood and we stand on what we believe in. Even though you have a lot of followers out here as well, you know what I mean, that really may not even can, you know what I mean, um, defend their faith, but they'll hold on to it. Brother Smallwood, you and I have talked more over. Yes, sir. I mean, we have talked more over. Let us just be right down to earth, one brother to another. Right. If, if I was your leader, and regardless of how much you love me as your leader and your teacher and your guide, could you support a teaching from me that is incorrect? No, I couldn't, I couldn't support you, but I know, I wouldn't know that as a student, if I was a student of yours, I know that there's a lot of things that you will teach that I may not fully understand. I agree. That's what I'm saying. This, listen, please, 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 please. See, this is how it is with the honorable life. This is how it is with faith. Now, some people can quote scripture. You got Brother William right here. He's very good, man, at doing what he does with the Bible, finding certain chapters. Everybody's not good at doing what he does. You have some brothers that can sing. You know what I mean? As well as some sisters that can sing. Everybody's not good at what they do. So they, you know what I'm saying? So yes, if I'm a student of yours, as we are students of y'all, trying to become students and growing into the, and maturing into the, the lessons of Almighty God, I'm sure there's going to be issues and subjects that I'm sure that even some of your followers have that, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they listening to you at times and don't really understand in context what it is. I'm, right? in, I'm in agreement with that, but should not the lessons be in the scriptures. Sure, the lessons, well, sometimes, because going back to the Prophet Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, look how the Holy Quran comes back. I'm just giving you a small yes, example. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the Bible, for example, I know we're not on the subject. Go ahead. The Bible calls Jesus the Son of God. Right. Right? right. But the Quran says, no, sir that Allah does not have a son. Right. Now, just from that perspective, it would look as though the Prophet Muhammad and the revelation that he received from Allah was contradicting the Bible. Right. But in essence, is it? I understand what it's saying. No, but I'm just, no, I don't think you do. I don't? No, I don't think you do. Because if you do, what I'm just saying, most Christians do, I don't want to categorize you like that. They don't do that. But I want to say, <laughs> um, but I want to say ahead, how at times it may appear as though it is contradicting, yeah. but it's not contradicting. All right. I 
think, and from what I understand from reading on the Holy Quran, there are times when, when Allah says, or as the Bible says about Jesus being called the Son of God, and here comes Muhammad with a revelation from God saying that Jesus is not his son. But in essence, Jesus was the Son of God. In the Quran, he's not a son of God, meaning that he's not a son of God by flesh. Because most Christians are under the misconception from their ministers and pastors that Jesus was the flesh and blood son of the creator. Mm -hmm. Making it look that it char therefore charging God with the act of adultery. Right. So Allah, in order for him to straighten out that confusion, <laughs> he sends a revelation down that says, why? Jesus was not his son. Mm -hmm. That's just an example. But it like just, I it said, just appears I, I, I as though, that. Right? It appears as though there's a contradiction unless you understand. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly. for th what about those who don't understand? Look at how they're walking away, you know what I'm saying, believing and blaspheming God. Right. Just because of what they, they're walking away, not really clearly understanding. Exactly. That's, what, that's the point that I was trying to make. I agree 100%. But the only point that I'm striving to make to my brothers from the nation of Islam, God is perfect. God is infallible. No flaws, no errors. The creator of the human family. If the prophet Muhammad wrote in the Quran the message being used by Allah that the Muslim community may live their life by those teachings, then any other man who declared himself to be messenger of Allah especially when you talk about God. How can you tell me you will believe it just because Elijah Muhammad said it, yet... Well, it's not so much of what he said, it's his work that we be a witness to, because we, never before, never before in the annals of history, and as far as I've been living, I've never seen a man that came on the scene and did a work in the way that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was, was blessed right. to do it. He took people and even baffled the minds of world scientists by taking people mm -hmm. that was in the gutter, bringing them up from nothing, cleaning them up, brother. He was a man that was taught by God, that had a third grade education. Right. Now, if this man wasn't taught by God and yet he was able to produce men, like Minister Farrakhan, who had a three-year college education but never graduated, who took a man like Malcolm X, who had an eighth-grade education, and took Muhammad Ali, who would have been just an ordinary fighter, brother, and, 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 and taught that man, and made that man, and made those men command the attention and the respect from the world. And I think that what we should do, what we should do is we, we should examine the works of that man right. and then look very, very closely at that man. Because unless, just as a diamond, as we discussed it earlier, okay, before we, got, before we came here, the only reason why you look so close at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, forgive me if I'm wrong, okay. is so that you can find the fault. And that's the only way that you'll ever know if a now, diamond is genuine. Let me see you this. must find the fault. No, I don't look. I will openly admit, and I do respect, the work that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad done. I respect that. What he done in the community of the black man, I openly and publicly and worldwide respect that. Sure I respect that. How he redeveloped many of the black brothers and sisters who was drug dealers and dope dealers and uh, murderers and thieves. I respect all that. We're not against that. We have no problem against that. His knowledge of business, how he established business to motivate the black people. Yeah. We, as a human being, I have no problems with that whatsoever. Never had and never will. Yeah. The problem I have is his teachings of God, not a restaurant or business. to anyone that Elijah Muhammad came on a scene and brought a message to black men and women that was different from the message of their time. Yet it had similarity to the message of Marcus Garvey. Similarity to the message of the Honorable Noble Drew Ali. We have no problems with that, brothers. So it isn't that I'm trying to seek to find out wrong. We care for truth. Right. All right, brother. And thank you again. <laughs>
Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Amin Khalees. I'm a registered believer of the Honorable Silas Muhammad. I'm uh, not at all here to represent the Nation of Islam under Silas Muhammad, but I'm here to represent myself. All right. Uh, brother, I was listening to you and uh, you had made some statements in reference to uh, perfection or man not being perfect. Man not being perfect like God Almighty himself. Okay, uh, what is this? Oh, that's a red book. <laughs> right. Did you spoke the truth or you just, or you, did you lie? Oh, I spoke the truth. But then in that case, you spoke the perfect truth that makes you, that makes you perfect in that aspect. Yes. Man can be perfect in speaking the truth. You're looking at it on the physical side. No, Do no, your, no, 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 no. Man can be perfect in speaking the truth. I agree. Do your children, their children I down agree. the line. I so agree. man can be perfect. And another thing, brother, you was mentioning different things about God using pronouns referring to God as a he and you, my uh, perception of you as being an intelligent black man uh, using God as a he he the spirit pardon me go ahead brother using God as a he yeah. referring to a physical human being no no that's not true you know you, you, I can use the word he and talk about the Lord well, if you're talking about a Lord, to me, I didn't say a Lord. Okay. When you say the Lord, is that Almighty Allah? Pardon me. The Lord. When you say the Lord, that's God. When you say a Lord, that can be you and I. Okay. Now, is that right? I'm trying to use righteous understanding. I'm not trying to and, and, no, righteous, and righteous intelligence. Yeah. But you're trying to sway me into this uh, Eurocentric Christian type ideology of what God is. Brothers. What is the composition of? You don't have knowledge. If you don't have knowledge where all things come from, then let us get that knowledge from the prophets who got their knowledge from God. Well, prophets, That's right. prophets are men. Where did they get their knowledge from? From other men. Isaiah, who did Isaiah get his knowledge Isaiah. from? From another man. Who did Muhammad get his from? Another man. Who was the man? Master for Rabbi Muhammad. No, I'm talking about Prophet Muhammad. Prophet um, Muhammad over 1400 years ago. What man came from Revelation? Another man. Who was he? I don't have that now. I'm being truthful. I'm being truthful. See, see, what I'm saying is I can't make anything up. See, what you're doing, you're going to you're going to the book. We know that the Quran was revealed by way of Yeah. A man. A flesh and blood man. But see, Gabriel was flesh and blood. But see. Just, just a minute, brother. Hold it. Let's backtrack. Backtrack. Okay. The, the Quran teaches how the angel Gabriel came to the prophet Muhammad. You're talking to me in, in Arab theology. We're talking about the science of the, uh, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is talking listen. about. Listen. 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 Let's, let's get down to the Quran. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad, messenger of Almighty Allah, received the message from the angel Gabriel. Is that correct? That's correct, Was Gabriel flesh and blood? Or was he the angel as we agree? Or was that angel spirit? Flesh and blood. You mean to tell you trying to say there's an angel with these big old wings? I didn't say that. Okay, but what are you talking about? You talk, we're talking about men. I'm not I'm not, I'm right. not, I'm not dealing with spookology. I'm now, dealing with physical. Now let's deal with the angels. Of heaven, heaven, because you have angels of heaven and angels of earth. That's right. That's right. So, in fact, what do you mean by heaven? Just a minute. Let us just see what the scripture says about Gabriel. Did, did they have any airplanes back then, by any chance? You, you, you think you think they had, you know, airplanes and sort of men could fly around back then? Uh, uh, brother, I really don't know. Could Gabriel fly? I don't know. Uh, what are you getting at? What's your point? Because you know, flesh and blood can't fly unless they're in a plane or a jet or a helicopter or something. Would you agree? Yes. So did Gabriel fly? I don't know. What do you think? Do Gabriel fly? I agree with brother. You don't know either. I don't know. That's, that's, that's being truthful. Back in those days, I guess you could. So, but, so they had air black. As far as them having wings on the back. I, I, ain't, I ain't talking about wings. I, ain't, I just simply asked could Gabriel fly. If there was an airplane or spaceship back in those days, yes. Yeah. So uh, back in the days of Isaiah and Daniel, yeah. Abraham, they had airplanes and jets flying around. We don't know that. I say if. If. If they mm -hmm. had. Those machines, yes, they could fly. But that's the only way man can fly. That's the only way man can fly. That's right. God can't take man somewhere without the aid of a machine. What God are you talking about? A spook God? You mean to tell me there is no power greater than you? 
Power represents something physical. And, and, and you use righteous intelligence. Power greater than yourself. Another man, probably even bigger and stronger than me. So, Romans. who made the universe? Man. My Lord. <laughs> There's no God. My There's Lord, no spirit of God over what? the black man, woman, and child here in America or outside of America. Donald Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that the you black man that, that, is God and the white man is the devil. That's the bottom all right, line. All right, all right, all right, that's... I, I, I'm messing up. I'm done with him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if a man believe that it ain't no power higher than himself, I can't help that man. Romans chapter 13. But let's see. Is there a power greater than God? Mm -hmm. Let's hand. Romans chapter 13 and at verse 1. Follow me. Let every soul. Let every soul. Be subject. Be subject. Unto the higher powers. Unto the higher powers. For there is no power. There is no power. But of God. But of God. The powers that be. The powers that be. Are ordained of God. Let's see what is man worth. Amen. Let's see what man is in the world. Amen. Whether you're black in the street, white as milk, yellow as butter, or clear as water. Amen. You, black man or black woman, Amen. you are dust. That's all. And when you die, the worm's going to devour your now carcass. Right. That's right. Talk to me. Amen. Amen. My Lord. What man is worth the value of man? In Isaiah chapter 40. The prophet declared. And at verse 6. Isaiah 40 and 6. The voice said cry. The voice. God said cry. And he said what shall I cry? Lord, what do you want me to say? All flesh. The scripture says all, no, just black flesh. All flesh. Amen. Just white flesh. All flesh. Green flesh. All flesh. Blue flesh. All flesh. Is grass. If you are the Almighty, you should never die. Amen. If you are the Almighty, you shouldn't get sick. That's right. If you are the Almighty, you shouldn't have to submit to the Quran. You are God Himself. That's right. <laughs> Psalms 39. Psalm chapter 39. And begin reading at verse 4. Begin reading at verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end. Lord, make me to know my end. So, I guess, my brother, if you happen to die and I go by the casket and look upon you, am I looking upon a dead almighty God? No. My Lord. Yes. <laughs> It's not me being God. It's through my children and through other uh, brothers and sisters. Being God over self. It's not me by myself. Brother, you stood here and said that you are almighty Allah. Isn't that what he said? Amen. No, I did not. I said that I was mighty. I didn't say I was almighty. Brother, I specifically, I specifically asked you, were you almighty Allah? You said yes. yes. Then I called the brother Smallwood and said, I know you ain't that bad. Amen. Brother? Well, he said he said Mike. He didn't say I didn't say I was all Mike. I said I am Mike. I can pick that brother up there. That's your natural that strength. Yeah, that's right. And then there are other brothers who are right. than me. If, if you're mighty, if you are mighty, is that strength limited? Yes, it is. But if you all mighty, can right. you do all things? It's limited to me. Can another you? brother can if, if pick, 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 pick uh, that way up, and another brother can pick that way up. Is that man, man will? Is there a man as a member of the human race that can do all things? Only a man can speak the truth or not. Can a man do all things? Or can God Almighty, creator of the universe, do all things? Man can will whatever he wants. My Lord, he can. And the white man approve it to you. You know he can. Listen, I defy every religion on earth. Amen. Amen. That contradict God. That's right. There's not a priest, That's a right. monk, a preacher, a email. Nobody. Nobody. That's the almighty outside of God himself. That's right. God is responsible for all of us being here. Amen. Amen. That's why Islam have a saying, all praise is due unto Allah. That's right. So if you can 
do it, stop paying it. That's right. Let's say all praise is due to you. Amen. All praise is due unto Allah. Why? Allah get recognition. Allah That's get right. honor. Allah get respect. Allah get all this. That's right. We don't get any of it. Amen. Amen. There is one God that's worthy to be praised. That's right. Worthy to be respected. That's right. And we must represent that God and crush any religion that supports polytheism. Amen. There's no God on earth but the God of heaven. That's right. If your God is flesh, he's not God. Not God. That's right. If your God is clay or statue, that's right. It's not God. Not God. God says, "Who is my equal?" That's right. Say the holy Save one. Say the holy one. Amen. God speak that which never exists and bring it into being. That's right. Those things that you hear now. That's right. Had to come into being. We came into being. Amen. We wasn't always here. No. No, you no. going out the way you came. That's right. And when you die, that's your end. That's your end. And your title never lasts, it ain't gonna help. No, it won't. When you die, <laughs> and they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust, here lie a brother that has no more fuss. Amen. It's all over. It's all over. I want to thank the brothers who represent the nation of Islam and even those that didn't. Mm -hmm. For taking time out to come. Amen. We thank them all. God is the greatest. Amen. God is the greatest. Amen. And Islam may say, Allah. Amen. We believe that. Believe that. That is our belief. That's right. Much needed. I thank my brother, Brother Smallwood Muhammad. We've been in communication now more than ever. And I believe we're going to be in communications more. Amen. I want to thank you, brothers, that accompany him, you that have been here before. We thank God for you. Also, we want to thank Brother Talim from the Sunni Muslim community Amen. and the others that came with him. Let me know how much time do we have left with the telecast, brothers. There is no God but one. Amen. Amen. And everybody in the world must, must obey this one. That's right. You religions that profess to be Christians who have Trinity, three distinct persons in the Godhead working together as a group. Amen. Wrong. Wrong. One. But one. That's right. We will live for him. That's right. We will bow to him. Amen. We will serve him. Amen. And if need be, die for him. Amen. All praises do unto God. Hallelujah. Let us dive into the scriptures. We have 47 minutes. Amen. Before our time run out. Everybody all right? Yeah. 
In the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Begin at verse 6. Isaiah chapter 43 and at verse 6. Listen. I will say to the north, give up. Listen, television viewers and radio listeners and you that are here, pay close attention. I will say to the north, give up. You that live in the north part of the world, give up. God wants you to give up. And to the south. And to the south. Keep not back. The act of submission is to surrender all. That's right. Our religion is holiness. Amen. Our religion is not Christianity. No, it's not. God had never started a religion called Christianity. That's right. Never had been, never will be. That's right. We can read our religion in the Bible. You may say, who's your founder? We don't have none. Amen. When did it begin? It never began. Never began. What Bible truth had always been here? Listen. In Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 4. Listen at the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him. According to as he hath chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. Our religion was here long before the world was. Amen. The world was. Amen. What is holiness? Holiness. God is holy. That's right. God is nothing else. That's right. He is a holy God. Amen. Amen. And if you are servants of this holy God, then you are to be transformed into a holy people by adapting the characteristics of God. That's right. That's what is meant. Ye are God. That's right. What do you mean? Ye are God. Ye are gods. Amen. Follow me in the back. In St. John chapter 10, begin reading at verse 34. Listen. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, yeah. and the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. And Jesus was quoting the prophet David. That's right. The son of Jesse. Amen. Listen. Psalms 82 and at verse 6. All right. I have said, ye are gods. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you. And all of you. Are children of the most high. But what? But ye shall die like men. Amen. Amen. In other words, even though <laughs> you may be called God. That's right. The almighty don't want us to get beside ourselves. That's right. That's right. Because we're going to die. Die like men. Like men. And fall. We're going to fall. Like one of the princes. Like one of the princes. Amen. So for me to be a God, a God. not the God. Right. That's right. For me to be a God in the earth. Mm -hmm. Meaning a symbol of power. That's right. A representation of power. That's right. Then the almighty God himself. Mm -hmm. A lot of men often talk about themselves as a man, man this, man that, man the other. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters. Amen. Before you can have a knowledge of yourself as a man mm -hmm. and a woman, you first must have knowledge of God. That's right. It is the knowledge of God that is the introduction to yourself. Amen. If you're ignorant of God, you're ignorant of self. That's right. God is all-knowing. That's right. We don't know much. No. God is able to do everything. Everything. We're able to do little by his help. That's right. You understand? That's right. We learn. That's right. God don't learn nothing. Amen. He is all knowing. Oh man. We strive to be wise. God is wisdom. That's right. That's right. We strive to understand. God is understanding. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. So for us to be God, God's. we must come into the knowledge of good mm -hmm. and evil. That's right. When we come into the knowledge of good and evil, that knowledge qualifies us or prepares us to make a proper decision mm -hmm. about things in life concerning self and others. That's right. You that are here, you that are watching and listening in, mm -hmm. the knowledge of evil is overwhelmingly loved mm -hmm. than the knowledge of good. Amen. That's why religion and members of the human family have chosen evil over good and stopped the recognition or tried to stop yeah. the recognition of God. Amen. Look at yourselves. Amen. You go to your churches mm -hmm. and smoke hmm. and drink. That's right. Gamble. Yeah. Live together, not marry. Mm -hmm. 
a sissy would be Christian preacher. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. That's right. A lesbian on the choir. Yes. All under the heading of God. That's right. And the title of Christianity. Christianity. But when you say holiness, holiness. that yeah. commands the utmost respect and obligation mm -hmm. and loyalty and commitment and submission and total surrender to the God of the universe. That's right. Why? Because if God is creating a holy people mm -hmm. through teaching. Through teaching. That's right. Teaching develops a people. Amen. Teaching also damns a people. That's right. Teaching resurrect a people. Amen. Do we believe in the resurrection of the dead? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. We believe that man is resurrected every day. Amen. Long before a mass resurrection takes place. That's right. What is resurrection? Resurrection. It is the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. You know, for years, churches and preachers have taught Gabriel going to blow a trumpet. Mm -hmm. Gabriel ain't blowing nothing. No. To nobody. That's right. No beat going to be hit. No note going to be sound. That's right. Trumpet represents speech. That's right. In the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. Amen. The Bible teaches us. Cry aloud. Give chapter and verse. In Isaiah chapter 58 and at verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. Lift up thy voice. Lift up thy voice. Like a trumpet. Like a trumpet. And show my people. And show my people. Their transgression. And the house of Jacob. Their sins. Why is the voice of the messenger styled as a trumpet? Trumpet. Hmm. Let us examine the material of the trumpet. That's right. Some trumpets are made out of brass. That's right. Some out of silver, mm -hmm. but the material of that trumpet mm -hmm. was created by God. That's right. That material was formed and created by the hand of God mm -hmm. in this well, in the earth. That's right. Then that substance of silver mm -hmm. or brass that's molten out of a stone mm -hmm. went through a process. Amen. Then had to be melted down. That's right. Then later cool. That's right. Fashion, mm -hmm. shape, and form into an instrument. Amen. But first it is formed in the earth. That's right. Any God Go sent ahead. messenger Go ahead. is formed Go ahead. in the earth. That's right. A darkness. That's right. Formed in darkness by the power of light. Amen. In the body of the woman is a darkness. Place. That's right. But light is there. That's right. Who is that light? God. God. Amen. Where is that light? Heaven and earth. That's right. And the light formed life in darkness. Some preachers preach that God begin to deal with you when you in the light. No, no, no. No, no. That's wrong. That's wrong. Your first experience with God is in darkness. That's right. That's right. God the world in the darkness. First Kings chapter 8. Don't say that sound like Islam. No, that's Bible. That's right. God the world in the darkness. In darkness. Listen at the scriptures. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. Follow me. Then spake Solomon. Then spake Solomon. The Lord said. The Lord said. That he would dwell. The Lord said. That's right. He, he would dwell. Would dwell. In. In. The thick. The thick. Darkness. darkness. Amen. Amen. God said I'll be there. That's right. So God steps or moves in the thick. The thick darkness. That's right. Of the woman. Go ahead. And the woman body is as a ship. Amen. Because it carry cargo. That's right. Life come in and life come out. That's right. And the ship that is carrying this livestock. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's carrying it in a dark place. Dark place. But it's being guided mm -hmm. by light. That's right. To better understand it, mm -hmm. when a ship is sailing on the water mm -hmm. with some valuable cargo. Amen. They have what is called a search light. That's right. That's right. It's traveling in darkness. Yeah. But here you have that tower. That's right. That light. Mm-hmm. And the ship see it. Right. The middle of the ship see it, even though the compass may get wrong. But mm -hmm. if they follow that light. Follow the light. Amen. The light guides them safely into port. That's right. God is the light. God is the light. That's right. Talk to me. That's right. The scripture says, Thine word is a light, light. Mm -hmm. unto my what? 
my feet and is a lamp unto my path. Why would you need light on your feet and on your path? You won't need it unless you're traveling in darkness. That's right. Somebody traveling in darkness. That's right. So you need light. Listen at the prophet. In Psalms 119 and at verse 105. Thy word, thine word is a lamp. Is a lamp unto my feet. Hold it. Amen. Words. Words. Speech. Mm -hmm. Bears the title of what? Thy word is a lamp. The word is a lamp? Word is a lamp. A lamp. Go ahead. How does word, how can word be a lamp? Mm -hmm. Because if you are ignorant, mm -hmm. you are in darkness. That's right. And the lamp comes in the form of speech. That's right. To resurrect that dead mind and dead heart who's ignorant of God, so ignorant of self. That's right. And through the sound of the trumpet, Go ahead. through the sound of words, Go ahead. Go ahead. Light, light is heard. That's right. Then when light is heard and light is believed, then light causes the mind to be active. That's right. When the mind becomes active, the heart begins to comply with what the mind says. And the heart become emotional with thoughts Amen. from the mind. That's right. Then the body begin to become active with what the ears have heard, right. what the mind have thought, and what the heart feels. That's right. Then you Go ahead. become a reflection of that light. That's right. When you live by that light, that's shining upon your footsteps. That's right. You don't need no light at your feet if you know where you're going. Where you're going. Amen. That's why folks need teaching. That's right. You are traveling, viewers. You're traveling. Amen. But you don't know where you're going. That's right. You're shouting your to God. Amen. In the churches. Amen. But all in the dark. The darkness. You are singing, serving communion. Yeah. Praying to Mary. Amen. Praying to some idol. That's right. Praying to some statue. Amen. Crazy about a white preacher. Crazy about a black preacher. Yes. To hell with them all. That's right. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Then your light, it's darkness. darkness. That's right. God is the light of his holy way. That's right. Light transformed us into a holy people that we may adapt and take on the characteristics of God. That's right. Taking on the character, that's why Jesus was here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we teach Jesus Christ as God, mm -hmm. We ain't talking about no man. No, no. No, no. Mary did not birth God. That's right. That's God right. can't fit in a womb. Amen. In a woman womb that big. That's right. Because That's right. when I hear the prophet Job talk about God, mm -hmm. Job saw it. That's right. And said, God, you are higher than heaven. Higher than heaven. You are deeper than hell, yeah. broader than the sea, Long and longer than the earth. That's right. That's God. That's God. When the title is presented in the scriptures, Son of God. That's right. It is ludicrous. Amen. Downright ignorant. Ignorance. For any religion to Boy. think that God, plain terms, would knock up a woman. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Teach it. Her womb. Teach it. That's foolish. That's foolish That's thing. Foolish. Amen. God, a sex symbol. My Lord. Imagine that. God in front of a magazine, he's November sex symbol. My Lord. The teaching of Jesus Christ as God has been misrepresented from churches for years. Amen. And we come to correct that which have deviated. That's right. That Mary birthed God, birth you're wrong. God. That's wrong. You men that teach that God became man, That's wrong. you're wrong. Amen. The Bible teaches that God was manifested in, in the flesh. flesh. God that God became flesh. That's God right. made flesh, then his presence was in that, in that flesh, flesh and manifested will in that flesh. That's right. To better understand it, if I'm a teller. Amen. Go ahead. If I'm a teller. Go ahead. I make 
a suit. Right. right. Now, before the suit take on shape, mm -hmm. the moment I buy the material, That's right. I already got the suit. That's right. But I must take time and cut. Right. Fashion. That's right. Shape. Go ahead. From the existing material. That's right. Before the form of man walked earth, when God made the earth, all people was here. That's right. But what was not here? The form. Jeremiah. Let's get some Bible. Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 23. Listen. I beheld the earth. The prophet said, I beheld the earth. And lo, Lord. it was without form. It didn't say he beheld the planet. That's right. That's right. That's I right. talk about the earth and not talk about the planet. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I beheld the earth. And lo, and lo, it was without form. Hold on, hold on. How can he be talking about the planet and say the planet was without form and hmm. then I beheld it? That's right. How can That's I see right. the planet and then be talking about the planet and say, well, I'm looking at it and have no form? No form. That's right. He's talking about what's within the planet. What is earth? We are. That's right. <coughs> I beheld the earth, it was without form. For, it was without form without and void. Without form and it was void, no life. That's right. And the heavens? And the heavens, they had no light. So when the earth was made, all population of the earth was right there. Right there. That's right. But you had no form. No form. Just like when I want to make a suit, mm -hmm. I go buy my four yards of material, mm -hmm. but you don't see a form of a jacket. That's right. And a form of pants. Mm -hmm. And a form of a vest. Right. But it is there. That's right. So what I got to do? Create. Create. I got to create and form and fashion me a suit. That's right. And then once I put it on, I manifest myself. Go ahead. I go put on. Put it on. That's right. What another handle. That's right. And then when I put it on, go ahead. The same name I have if I'm the creator of the suit. Mm -hmm. The suit take on my name. That's right. That's right. The suit is not me. No. But it is active as long as I'm in it. That's right. When we teach Jesus Christ as God, no, no man, flesh and blood was God. That's right. God was in that man. God was in him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, 5 and at verse 19, verse 19 to, wit, to wit that God, it was, God located. was in Christ. In. 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 In Christ. In Christ. Reconciling the world. Redeeming the world. Unto himself. So here comes Jesus being the perfect representation of God himself. That's right. He was an ambassador. That's right. To represent a power higher than his flesh. That's right. That's why he's called son of the highest. highest. That's right. That flesh was not the highest. No, no. That flesh was son. Well, what do you mean son? Servant. Servant. Even the Bible said, now are we the That's sons right. of God. Sons of God. Why are we servants, servants of God? That's right. So Jesus bear the title son or servant mm -hmm. or minister mm -hmm. of God. That's right. Now the name Jesus mm -hmm. is Amen. an inherited name. That's right. In Hebrews chapter 1. And this is what the churches don't know and what they have never taught. This is why the fight been bitter. That's right. On the subject, Jesus Christ is God. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my Sunni Muslims, brothers in the office. He said, well, brother minister, I want you to make it emphatic. You know, we don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. We don't believe that no, no woman birthed God and whatnot. I said, we don't either. That's right. He said, huh? <laughs> he said, wait, 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 wait. He said, now you're going to have to talk to me. <laughs> Amen. Because this is all they heard. Yeah. Because they never heard a man of God in the church before. That's right. All they heard was cross wearing false prophets. That's right. That's right. When I begin to explain to him, God is one. Mm -hmm. And for God to get his divine perfect will over, we don't believe that the Son of God came from heaven. No. No, no. We don't believe no flesh and blood came no from heaven and came down to the earth like an astronaut. That's right. That's right. 
came jumping down from the heavens. Amen. No, no, no. We believe the eternal God that made the universe and all things therein visit the house of David, who was of the tribe of Judah, who came from the generations of Shem, the brother of Ham and Japheth, Noah boy. That's right. Yes. And God wanted the perfect representation of himself. Amen. He wanted it so bad, he moved on John to say heaven will search. That's right. Couldn't find the one there. Mm -hmm. Earth will search. That's right. Couldn't find the one there. Under the he earth. went down underneath the earth. Under the earth. That was sent. That's right. Couldn't find no man to swear by, so he swore by himself. By himself. That's right. So the one God said, mm -hmm. Lo, I, I, I come. I come. Mm -hmm. My brother said, You can't talk about the spirit and use the word he. Ooh. Oh, yes, you can. The Bible said, When he, That's the right. spirit of truth, is come. Is come, he will come. St. John chapter 16. Why would God Almighty be spirit and yes, keep wearing the title of He? He. It's meaning in that. That's right. Yes, it is. The reason why God will always address Himself as He. He. Because man is the representation of God. That's right. Not the woman. Not the woman. The woman is the weaker vessel. That's right. But it is written how God made man upright. upright. The woman came after. A sheep came after. That's right. That's right. God bear the title he, he and God bear the title him. That's right. God have never described himself on the female agenda. No, no, never. God sent prophets Amen. with the divine message of truth Amen. to preach. Amen. That's but right. he have never sent a prophetess to preach. That's right. He sends a prophetess to foretell the event that's going to come. That's right. But he had never sent a prophetess to come before the folk and break down the scriptures, scriptures. and allow the scriptures and the charge and rebuke and That's chastise. Right. Amen. Amen. Because the woman cannot have a use of authority over, over the man. That's right. This ain't male chauvinism. This is God's order. God's law. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So the teaching of Jesus Christ is God mm -hmm. is referring to the nature of a name. That's right. What is the nature of God? Mm -hmm. the, the, there's two natures. Human and divine. Human and divine. Flesh and spirit. And spirit. Let's see what nature does God have. In St. John chapter 4 and verse 24. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. A spirit. Mm -hmm. Balaam. Mm-hmm. Said in Numbers chapter 23 and at verse 19. He said, I bet on the son of Beor, falling into a trance, having my eyes open, having the knowledge of the most high. Mm -hmm. Behold, I shall see him. Not now. But not now. I shall look upon him, but not nigh. A star mm -hmm. shall come out of Jacob. Jacob. Why would a star come out of Jacob? Stars are not seen until night. That's right. And the stars that seen at night reflect the sun. That's right. Jesus, who bear the title Son of Man, came in the midst of darkness. darkness. That's right. And he reflect a light that was greater than his flesh, and that was God. That's right. And the people saw the great light. What was it? Words. Words. That's right. That's why the Pharisees and Sadducees was dumbfounded. Amen. The name of God mm -hmm. or the name that the Son of God had mm -hmm. was inherited. That's right. Passed down. Passed down. Given name. That's right. Listen. In Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 4, being made so much better than the angels. God ain't made. No. That's right. God ain't made. God always was. Always was. We are made. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Amen. It's talking about Jesus here. That's right. It's talking about his son, his flesh. The flesh. That flesh and blood, the human man. Right. The minister. Mm -hmm. The servant. That's right. The one that was designed for example purposes. That's right. All right. Being made so much better than the angels. Made so much better than the angels. As he hath by inheritance. As he hath by inheritance. Obtained a more excellent name than they. 
Well, where did he get his name from? Get it from. He said, I come in my father's name. He certainly ain't talking about Joseph. No. If he was talking about Joseph, why would in the world that Joseph want to put his wife away? He ought to know whether he slept with her or not. That's right. Amen. But Joseph lacked the understanding of a divine performance of God. That's right. Why would anyone think it impossible mm. for God? Mm -hmm. to, that's what the Bible said. A new thing that's right. shall be performed in the earth. the earth. Like Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam didn't have no earthly father. But he didn't have no earthly mother. No, he didn't. But he exists. That's right. Who made him? God. Oh. What would make Jesus different? from all other ministers that would walk earth mm -hmm. because Jesus was able to save. That's right. As one Muslim brother taught one time, Jesus saves. That's right. And that's true. That's true. And it's still true today. That's right. Salvation ought to be saved me to be delivered. Deliver. It is the message of hope and truth that deliver us from sin, ignorance. Mm -hmm. See, you folk that's living together, not married, you need truth. That's right. You in bondage. That's right. You women that walk the streets with your breasts hanging out. Mm -hmm. Pants so tight you look like a human snake. Amen. Then you out there passing out tracks. That's right. Second folk, have you been born today? That's right. Ain't no one thinking about Christ looking at your tight backside? No, no. Go ahead. Am I? Go ahead. Right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. So the purpose of the manifestation of God in the man Christ Jesus, that Jesus may publish God's name. That's right. And listen, that the behavior of God. That's right. That's right. That God's behavior. Mm hmm his attitude Amen. may be demonstrated in the earth mm -hmm. that all that come after the Son of Man may, hold, may know how to act all towards right. God. That's right. That's what is meant that he left us an, an example, example that we should, should follow, follow his, steps. his steps. So if you're following the steps of a teacher, Amen. and Jesus was a master teacher, That's right. then he leaves an example how to walk. How to walk. How to talk. That's right. How to submit. That's right. How to obey. Mm -hmm. How to pray. Mm -hmm. How to be disciplined. That's right. How to resist temptation. Amen. To the Bible say he was tempted in all points, yet without sin, let us us or no. If he can do it, you can do it to him. God's help. Amen. <laughs> Leaving us an example. Listen. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and at verse 21. Leave Leaving us an example. Us a pattern. That ye should follow his steps. The so-called Christians today are not following the steps of Jesus. No. no. No, you're too busy rapping. That's right. That's right. You're too busy got your contemporary rap trash. That's right. You're too busy living together, not married, and remarriage and divorcing like I don't know what. Amen. You're too busy running around in a bar and going to some little Christian party. That's right. A Christian part. Christian part. What's that fellow named Snoopy Dog or, or Dopey Dog? What's Snoop Dog. Snoop Dog. <laughs> if you play Snoop Dog music in a club, Amen. Everybody's come on. Here we go. Here we go. Let me hear you say it. So, That's right. Am I right? Amen. Now you church people. Church people. Go ahead. Or should I say, you religious people? That's right. You know this. That's right. You come with this so-called Christian hip-hop bebop trash. Amen. Go in the same city. Same thing. And because someone rap and change the lyrics a little bit and mention the name Jesus. Yeah. But yet your rhythm is the same. That's right. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. That's right. So-called Christian rap videos got half naked women Amen. with hot pants, bend their backside over, Amen. just like you hoes out there. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you wonder why this telecast is different? Amen. It is because our religion is not Christianity. That's right. Our religion is the religion of God, not the 
religion of Constantine. That's right. That's right. Holiness, Holiness. unto the Lord. That's right. Holiness That's right. demands obedience. Amen. And holiness. Amen. No smoking. Mm -hmm. No drinking. Yeah. No gambling. That's right. No fornicating. That's right. No shooting pool. Amen. No playing cards. Amen. No living in adultery. That's right. No racism. Go ahead. No being self-exalted. That's right. Not being pride. Amen. Must be under obedience. Amen. No half-naked women. Go ahead. No women with your breasts hanging out. No makeup on your face. Go ahead. No jewelry in your ear. Go ahead. No ankle chains on like street whores. Amen. Not processing your hair. Amen. Burning your hair out. Amen. No eyebrow pencil. Go ahead. No earrings in our men. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. No earrings in our men. No earrings in the men. That's right. No rings in your nose. That's right.
The Nation of Islam, NOI, is a unique religious and political movement that diverges significantly from mainstream Islam and has been the subject of considerable controversy due to its distinctive doctrines and teachings. Founded in 1930 by Wallace Fard Muhammad, the NOI mixes elements of traditional Islamic belief with Afrocentric perspectives, black nationalism, and an emphasis on racial pride and self-sufficiency. Over the years, the group has attracted attention both for its empowerment of black communities and for its unusual theological positions, many of which differ radically from orthodox Islamic teachings. One of the most distinctive and controversial beliefs of the Nation of Islam is that Wallace Fard Muhammad, the founder of the movement, is regarded as a divine figure. The NOI teaches that Fard was God incarnate, a doctrine that stands in sharp contrast to traditional Islamic monotheism, which maintains that Allah is without form and cannot be incarnated. This teaching has led to widespread rejection of the NOI by Orthodox Muslims who view the idea of God manifesting as a human as contrary to the core tenets of Islam. The Nation of Islam also holds that Elijah Muhammad, who led the movement after Fard's disappearance, was a prophet sent by God to guide black Americans. This, too, sharply conflicts with mainstream Islamic beliefs, which hold that the prophet Muhammad of 7th century Arabia is the final and last prophet. Orthodox Muslims reject any post-Muhammad claims to prophethood, and the NOI's elevation of Elijah Muhammad to such a status places the group outside the traditional Islamic fold. One of the strangest and most controversial teachings of the NOI is the myth of Yaqub, a figure who is said to have been a black scientist responsible for creating the white race. According to this doctrine, Jacob engaged in a selective breeding program 6,600 years ago that led to the creation of a devil race, white people, whom the NOI teaches are inherently wicked and are responsible for the oppression of black people throughout history. This racialized interpretation of human history has garnered significant criticism for promoting racial division and for its pseudoscientific basis. The Nation of Islam preaches the superiority of the black race, teaching that black people are the original and supreme race of humanity. The movement promotes a form of black nationalism that encourages its followers to separate from white society and establish their own economic and social structures. This doctrine of racial superiority has often been condemned as reverse racism and is seen as divisive by both civil rights advocates and the broader Muslim community. While the NOI identifies with Islam, many of its religious practices and teachings diverge from traditional Islamic norms. For instance, while they adopt some Islamic rituals such as prayer, fasting, and dietary laws, these practices are often modified in ways that reflect the group's distinct theology. For example, NOI adherents may perform prayers differently from Sunni or Shia Muslims, and the movement emphasizes the need for its own dietary restrictions, such as avoiding certain foods that it deems harmful to black health and independence. The NOI teaches that salvation is tied to the empowerment and liberation of black Americans and that the struggle against white oppression is a form of spiritual battle. While traditional Islam teaches that salvation comes through submission to Allah, the NOI places heavy emphasis on racial struggle and views black Americans as God's chosen people who will ultimately lead the world. This ethnocentric interpretation of Islam has led to the rejection of the NOI by many in the broader Muslim world, which emphasizes a universal, rather than racially specific approach to salvation. The Nation of Islam also has its own set of end times beliefs that center around the eventual downfall of white supremacy and the establishment of a black-led world order. The group teaches that God will intervene to destroy the oppressive systems of white society and that black people, under the leadership of the NOI, will inherit the earth. These apocalyptic beliefs are tied to the NOI's racial theology and its emphasis on the imminent fall of white power structures.
One of the more esoteric and unusual teachings of the NOI is the belief in the existence of a massive spaceship called the Mother Plane, or Mother Wheel. According to Elijah Muhammad, this craft was built by black scientists and hovers in the sky, awaiting the right moment to intervene in human affairs. The mother plane is said to play a role in the apocalyptic events that will lead to the downfall of white civilization. This belief in extraterrestrial involvement in human affairs has added to the group's reputation for having unorthodox and bizarre ideas. Beyond its theological doctrines, the Nation of Islam has long emphasized economic self-sufficiency and independence from white-dominated institutions. The group encourages its members to engage in businesses that are owned and operated by black people, and it has developed various economic ventures over the years, including grocery stores, bakeries, and farms. This emphasis on black economic power has been one of the more positive and constructive aspects of the NOI, despite the controversial nature of some of its other teachings. The teachings of the Nation of Islam, while rooted in themes of black empowerment and self-determination, diverge sharply from both mainstream Islamic and broader societal norms. The group's beliefs, such as the divinity of Wallace Fard Muhammad, the racial superiority of black people, and the myth of Yaqub, have earned it criticism from many quarters. Yet, despite these controversies, the NOI has played a significant role in the socio-political landscape of the United States, particularly in its advocacy for the rights and dignity of African Americans. Its legacy, though complicated, continues to influence discussions around race, religion, and empowerment. The Nation of Islam's NOI, Belief in the Story of Yaqub, the scientist who is said to have created the white race, is one of its most controversial and peculiar doctrines. This myth, propagated by Elijah Muhammad, the longtime leader of the NOI, is central to the group's teachings on race, power, and the historical oppression of black people. It offers a radically different view of human history, grounded in a racialized cosmology that seeks to explain the origins of racial differences and the social hierarchy that emerged from them. According to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, Yaqub was a black scientist who lived approximately 6,600 years ago. He is said to have been a brilliant but malevolent figure who devised a plan to create a race of people who would rule over the original black inhabitants of Earth. Jacob's motivation, according to the NOI, stemmed from a desire to challenge the peaceful rule of black people and to create a new race that would bring chaos, destruction, and deceit to the world. This race, as the story goes, would be white people, described as inherently evil, in contrast to the virtuous and godly black race. The method by which Jacob is said to have created the white race is described as a process of selective breeding. The NOI teaches that Jacob, using his advanced scientific knowledge, began a genetic experiment on the island of Patmos, where he isolated certain individuals to reproduce only with others who carried specific genetic traits that would ultimately result in a lighter-skinned race. Over several generations, this process led to the creation of the white race, which, according to this doctrine, is a genetically engineered group designed to be deceptive and violent. Jacob's experiment was not simply biological, but moral as well. The NOI teaches that Jacob aimed to create a race devoid of the original righteousness of black people, intending for white people to become a tool for the subjugation and oppression of their creators. This narrative serves to explain the historical dominance of white societies over black people, presenting it as a long-term conspiracy born out of Jacob's desire to invert the natural order. Once the white race was created, the NOI story suggests that they were sent back to the mainland where they gradually overthrew black rulers and established their dominion. The white race is depicted as using cunning, trickery, and violence to gain control, thus initiating a long period of suffering and oppression for black people. 
According to this teaching, the oppression that African Americans face during slavery, colonization, and other forms of exploitation is directly linked to the creation of the white race by Yakub. This narrative, while providing a mythological explanation for real historical oppression, turns human history into a cosmic battle between good, black, and evil, white, and positions the white race as an artificial creation, inherently immoral and designed to cause chaos. The story reinforces the NOI's broader message of black racial superiority, as well as its call for black separation from white-dominated society. The story of Yaqub is more than just a myth. It is integral to the Nation of Islam's worldview. It provides a theological framework for understanding the racial dynamics that shape modern society, from systemic racism to economic inequality. In the NOI's view, the subjugation of black people is not merely a social or political issue, but is part of a deeper spiritual and cosmic plan set into motion by Yakub's genetic engineering. This doctrine also serves as a form of empowerment for NOI followers. By framing the white race as a temporary aberration in the divine order, the NOI predicts an eventual reversal of this power dynamic. Elijah Muhammad taught that the current world order, dominated by white people, is nearing its end and that black people, as the original and righteous race, will soon reclaim their rightful place as rulers of the earth. This eschatological vision promises not only racial justice, but also a spiritual triumph over the forces of evil embodied by the white man. The Yaqub myth has been widely criticized, both by scholars of religion and by traditional Muslims, who view it as a distortion of Islamic teachings. The story bears no resemblance to any known scientific or historical facts and is seen as a form of pseudoscience. Genetic research shows that humanity cannot be neatly divided into distinct races in the way the NOI suggests, and the notion of a 6,600-year-old selective breeding experiment lacks any basis in reality. Moreover, this teaching has been denounced for its overtly racial content. Many critics argue that the story of Jacob promotes reverse racism by demonizing the white race as inherently evil. By framing history as a racial struggle between black and white, the doctrine risks perpetuating the very divisions it seeks to overcome, leading to accusations of racial hate and extremism. Civil rights leaders, mainstream Muslim scholars, and many African-American intellectuals have condemned the Yaqub myth for its divisiveness and its reliance on a simplistic and inaccurate view of race. Despite its lack of scientific credibility, the Yaqub story can be interpreted as a symbolic narrative that reflects the historical trauma experienced by black Americans. The myth serves as a way to explain the seemingly insurmountable oppression that African Americans have faced throughout history, providing a framework that positions black people as the original and rightful rulers of the earth who were unjustly displaced by an evil force. In this way, the story functions as a form of psychological empowerment, offering NOI adherents a sense of pride and historical purpose. It also reflects the broader Afrocentric and black nationalist goals of the Nation of Islam, which seeks to instill racial pride and self-sufficiency in its followers. The myth of Yaqub, while extreme, taps into the frustration and anger many African Americans feel about systemic racism and historical injustice, transforming these feelings into a cosmic struggle for justice and redemption. The story of Yaqub and the creation of the white race is one of the most unusual and controversial aspects of the Nation of Islam's theology. While it has been widely dismissed as pseudoscience and reverse racism, it remains a powerful narrative within the NOI, offering a racially charged explanation for the historical subjugation of black people and a vision of eventual black triumph. The myth speaks to the deeper psychological and social needs of the NOI's followers, offering them a framework for understanding their place in history and providing hope for a future where black people reclaim their rightful power. The Nation of Islam, 
NOI, with its distinctive blend of religious, racial, and political ideologies, has often stood at odds with both mainstream Islamic thought and other northern religious traditions, particularly those rooted in Christianity and Judaism. Given the NOI's unique doctrines, particularly its emphasis on racial dynamics and black nationalism, it has received a range of reactions from northern religious communities. These responses are shaped by theological differences, historical contexts, and socio-political concerns. Here's an in-depth commentary on how various northern religious traditions see and think about the Nation of Islam. The most notable critique of the Nation of Islam comes from mainstream Islamic scholars and communities. For most Muslims, the Nation of Islam's teachings deviate significantly from the core tenets of Islam, and many do not consider it part of the global Islamic ummah, community. Several aspects of the NOI's doctrines sharply conflict with Orthodox Islamic beliefs, including their view of God, the status of Prophet Muhammad, and racial theories. Central to Islamic belief is the oneness of God, known as Tawheed. Islam teaches that Allah is unique, without partner or form, and transcendent. The nation of Islam's view that Wallace Fard Muhammad was an incarnation of God contradicts this principle. Mainstream Muslims view this belief as shirk, associating partners with God, which is considered the gravest sin in Islam. The notion of God manifesting in human form is utterly incompatible with Islamic theology. Islam holds that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final prophet, referred to as the seal of the prophets. However, the NOI teaches that Elijah Muhammad was a prophet sent to guide black Americans, a claim that violates the core Islamic doctrine that no prophet will come after Muhammad. This has led mainstream Muslims to reject the NOI as a non-Islamic movement, despite its use of Islamic symbols, terminology, and rituals. Traditional Islam is a universal religion that emphasizes the equality of all races before God. The Quran speaks of humanity as one, regardless of race or ethnicity. In contrast, the Nation of Islam's teachings on the inherent superiority of the black race and the creation of the white race as devils directly contradict this. Mainstream Islam sees racial equality as fundamental, and thus, the NOI's racially charged rhetoric is viewed as divisive and contrary to Islamic principles of brotherhood. Over the decades, many prominent members of the NOI, most famously Malcolm X, left the movement after traveling to Mecca and embracing Orthodox Sunni Islam. These conversions reflect the ideological and theological divide between the two groups as Malcolm X and others were drawn to the universalist, non-racialized message of mainstream Islam after encountering the broader Muslim Christianity, particularly the various denominations prevalent in the 2800s Northern Hemisphere, also views the Nation of Islam with a mixture of theological disagreement, socio-political wariness, and at times, empathy for its emphasis on black empowerment. Christianity, like Islam, finds many of the theological claims of the Nation of Islam troubling. The NOI's rejection of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and its view of Christianity as a tool of white supremacy challenge core Christian beliefs. While Christianity promotes the salvation of all humanity through faith in Jesus, the NOI's racially exclusive doctrines position Christianity as a religion that has historically been used to oppress black people. Despite these theological differences, many African-American Christian churches, particularly in the civil rights era, saw the NOI as a powerful force for black empowerment. While Christian leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., promoted nonviolent resistance and racial integration, figures like Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad advocated for black self-usufficiency, racial pride, and separation from white society. While Christian leaders often disagreed with the NOI's tactics and religious framework, there was some common ground in the shared struggle against systemic racism. 
The NOI's emphasis on racial pride and its critique of white supremacy has, to some extent, influenced black Christian churches, particularly those that focus on liberation theology. These churches, while remaining committed to Christian doctrines, have adopted some of the nation's focus on black empowerment and critique of white-dominated institutions. More conservative Christian groups view the Nation of Islam with greater suspicion, particularly due to its militant rhetoric and past associations with racial separatism. Many Northern Christians see the NOI as too radical and divisive, undermining efforts toward racial reconciliation and harmony. Some conservative evangelical and Catholic groups have also expressed concern about the NOI's hostility toward traditional Christianity seeing it as a threat to religious unity and equalness. The relationship between Judaism and the Nation of Islam has been marked by significant tension, particularly due to the NOI's rhetoric surrounding Jews and the history of anti-Semitism within the movement. Leaders within the Nation of Islam, most notably Louis Farrakhan, have made numerous statements over the years that have been widely condemned as anti-Semitic. Farrakhan has referred to Judaism as a gutter religion and accused Jews of controlling the media, financial institutions, and participating in the enslavement of black people. These comments have led to widespread condemnation from Jewish organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, and others. The NOI's anti-Semitic rhetoric has strained black-Jewish relations, particularly in the U.S., where both communities have historically cooperated in the struggle for civil rights. During the civil rights movement of the 1960s, Jewish leaders and organizations were key allies in the fight for racial equality. However, the NOI's emphasis on racial separatism and its hostile rhetoric toward Jews created a rift, leading to distrust between the two communities. Despite these tensions, some African-American leaders who have worked with or sympathized with the NOI have distanced themselves from its anti-Semitic rhetoric. Figures like Malcolm X, after his departure from the NOI, repudiated its hostility toward Jews and began to advocate for broader coalitions across racial and religious lines. From a theological perspective, Judaism, like Christianity and Islam, views many of the NOI's claims as problematic. The idea that Jews, or any group, have an inherently evil or deceptive nature is contrary to Jewish teachings about the dignity and equality of all human beings. Jewish scholars and religious leaders reject the NOI's racialized theology as incompatible with the principles of justice and equality in Judaism. Many northern religious groups, including Christian denominations, Jewish organizations, and even mainstream Muslim groups, have engaged in interfaith dialogue with the Nation of Islam. While these dialogues are often fraught with tension due to theological and racial differences, they represent an attempt to build understanding and find common ground on issues like social justice and racial inequality. Despite the theological divides, the NOI's influence on northern religious communities has been significant in shaping discussions around race, power, and justice. Its strong critique of systemic racism and white supremacy has resonated with religious leaders and activists who are also concerned with issues of social justice, even if they reject the NOI's theological framework northern religious traditions, including mainstream Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, generally view the Nation of Islam as a group with significant theological divergences and controversial racial doctrines. While the NOI's emphasis on black empowerment and critique of white supremacy resonates with some aspects of the northern religious community, its teachings on race, God, and history place it at odds with these traditions' core beliefs. As a result, the NOI is often seen as a religious movement that occupies a distinct and somewhat isolated position within the broader religious landscape. Despite these divides, the NOI's influence on discussions of race, religion, and justice remains substantial.
Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, Noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. I can pick that brother up.